why you are unable to crack CSI net exam again and again and this is the question I have received vigorously all the time I am prepared a lot I've read everything I've joined several classes I've taken the mock test but still why I fail in CSI and net I've been preparing for now three years I've given six different exams there but still I am not able to qualify CSI and net so where exactly I'm going wrong I'm giving everything to this exam but I'm still not get, getting anything this is the most interesting question that come up to every CSI aspirants out there and if you're one of them this video is just for you because I'm going to tell you why you fail again and again in your CSI net exam so stay tuned so why you fail at CSI net exam I have listed three major three major uh, enemies for CSI exam uh, there uh, there are also many other things but these are the three major enemies which are blocking your path to achieve CSI net GRF or LS whatever you think the first thing is fear believe it or not this is a huge killer in any other field and also in exam this is the most dangerous thing all the time fear can give you a huge huge setback during the exam as well as in the pre-exam preparation in all these cases now may I ask you why do you fear net why do you people fear net I've been uh, in different universities I've been in different colleges when I ask uh, the students there why what do you think about CSI net you know the most common answer that I get is that it's extremely difficult and this is I mean very very difficult exam this is the thing everyone thinks about but actually this is not how you are going to look at it if you're going to look it at something ungettable you're not going to get it in your life you need to think about it that this is this is not a rocket science mass. this is an exam uh, that people qualify every year right 700 800 people qualifies every year I mean not every year every season actually so so this is something definitely gettable obviously complicated obviously difficult but gettable definitely so do not fear the exam if you fear the exam what will happen it is proven that if you let's say you prepare for a CSI net exam you prepared at your best you think that this is how you're going to prepare and everything is fine you just uh, went to the hall uh, of CSI net exam and you provide the exam you, you just uh, answer the questions and you came back and thought that you're not going to have that CSI net this, this year and the answer key came in and you just uh, see that again you fail now you take the same question that you got in the exam hall but if you conduct that same question same experiment same exam at your home without any pressure I am guaranteeing you you're going to score at least 20 or 25 percent more in this scenario and it is statistically uh, spoken because I'm not speaking it from my opinion it's statistics that is telling us that in these exams if a person is taking the exam in the exam hall and the person the same person taking the same question in the exam in, in a in a place without that pressure he or she is going to qualify the chances of qualifying is 20 to 25 percent more in the non-pressurized condition because it's 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 common sense pressure can provide pressure set back people so those pressure can make you make wrong decisions in the exam because in CSI and net it is difficult in multiple ways it is not only difficult that uh, the questions are difficult but also it is difficult because of other things like it is difficult because uh, it has difficult questions first of all second thing is that it is difficult due to uh, it has uh, uh, many number of questions and you need to answer very few of them so not only the questions are difficult but also you need to select which questions you want to answer that is another big deal right so if you have 100 questions and you need to answer only 50 questions it makes uh, to uh, the answering of the questions much more difficult so that's what CSR is doing right if it provides 20 questions you need to answer 20 questions it becomes less complicated but if you if they provide you 50 questions and if they tell you to answer 20 questions it becomes much more difficult remind in the C group there are 75 questions but you need to answer only 25 you can exclude 50 questions you thought that yes that's good 
above 75 i only need to answer 25 but actually it makes things more difficult because it it also includes the odds for solving the questions and selecting the questions which is also a difficult thing also a big deal because if you select wrong questions to answer you are not going to qualify let's say you select those questions you're selecting questions from molecular biology portion uh, which are given at the very beginning of the of the page of the paper of the question paper you start answering the question because uh, let's say you prepare molecular biology very well and you start answering all the questions of molecular biology in this field at the very beginning so what will happen you thought that you're going to answer questions but surprisingly that year the molecular biology question in csi net becomes much more difficult so you are not able to answer all the questions so during the time you uh, the time you devote to answer those questions is much more but the productivity is less now you're turning the pages out, down and you see at the back of the page there are developmental biology questions which are very basic very very easy there are questions from evolutionary biology very easy you can easily do that but once you see that you have only 10 minutes in your hand so these things happen all the time relate yourself with all these situations this is one of the dangerous things sometimes what you feel in an exam hall try to connect all these things what do you think that you're answering all these questions start answering the question from the beginning and you start answering from the group A and you are unable to answer most of the questions in the group A. You only answer two or three questions. The confidence levels for you goes very much down that I'm not going to crack the net. But that is not the scenario because you don't need to answer all the questions there. The marks for group A is only 30. You have 170 marks still in your hand to qualify net. What happens actually during that situation, tensor starts to rise as you fail to answer one or two questions at the very beginning. And I personally find this thing that CSR net question set in such a way is that at the very beginning the questions are difficult. In certain cases, I feel these things. The questions are difficult as you go on in the letter pages or middle pages, the questions are easier. So people start from start. We, we start from the beginning of the question paper and start answering the question. You find it difficult. You fail to answer too, much, too many questions. You say all the questions are blank. You're not able to answer. And you think that you're not going to qualify. That creates a tension in your mind. And that tension is going to kill you. That tension is going to grab the chance and opportunity you have to qualify in it. Do not allow that tension to kill you. Do not fall victim to that tension again. So what do you do at that situation? You have plenty of things. Think strategically. Think logically. That the questions are many so the chances of clearing it is still there until and unless the exam ends so do not be tensed in those situations always keep track on things don't look at your watch again and again and think that i'm not going to answer all the questions don't look at the watch at that time you have three hours of time you have practiced enough in your room now you can going to get it very easily so even if you fail to answer too many questions at the beginning there might be some questions which will be easy for you at the at, at the latter pages and you can answer them very 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 fast right that thing may happen so do not lose faith at this situation so beat that tension that is the thing in the exam hall tension can be pre-examination also pre-examination tension can be cannot that cannot be that much devastating like the exam hall tension because exam hall tension is very much dangerous but pre-exam tension you can solve that easily that uh, you you start solving the questions and think that whatever you prepared yesterday now today you're slightly bit advanced than that day and tomorrow you'll be much more advanced because you, you're going to learn some, some, certain things new and uh, that's the way you think so whatever things you are doing, you are doing one step ahead. So you are not backing up. You are going forward. Do not have any tension. That is the first thing. Second thing about uh, this whole process is uh, the inability to, to recall. I always tell my students that you should recall stuff. What we do in all our life, we we'll read a lot of things. We study a lot of things. We take out the books. We read the papers and everything, every topics and everything from different books. For example, you're preparing for uh, CSI net. Let's say you're preparing, uh, you're preparing that module of uh, uh, the replication, transcription, and translation of proteins. Now, what you do actually, you take all the other molecular biology books, which, which con contains all these materials, and start reading them. And you say that, yes, I am prepared very well for all this. But how many times you just sit take a blank paper or just in your mind start to recall all the stages 
of replication, transcription and translation. Have you done this ever? You have read a lot more things but you never recall things. We never recall things. That is the biggest problems of our education system. We always, always read things, dumb things in your brain and you never recall things. If you see our brain, it's just like the memory of a computer. If you have the, uh, the idea of how computer works, it's so whatever things we're doing, that is a called a RAM or random access memory. So that random memory is the memory where we uh, store things for a very small duration of time. When we run a program, it is going to store there and run from there. It, it has a particular allocation unit there. But that thing is not completely saved in the hard disk. Because if we are going to shut off the machine, when you shut down the machine, all the information that was there in the RAM that was running previously are gone. So what we do, whenever we read things, it was in our RAM, in our small memory, in our memory, which is a short term memory. Now when we sleep or for too many days, we haven't conduct, uh, we haven't learned that again and again and we have read that topic again, that memory is gone just like the memory of RAM, right? So that is not going to store in your brain. So in future, when you are going to see any question coming from that topic you have learned, say two uh, months ago, you are unable to answer the question. Even if sometimes think that I have read that very well, I am going to answer the question. But in reality, you will not be able to answer the question very well because you have not recalled that thing. So to make it a permanent memory, just like the computer, to save a thing permanently in the computer, we need to copy that program or copy that thing and paste it to the hard disk. Similarly, to put it, the short term memory things in the long term memory, we need to recall things. Because when you recall, our nerve cells start to have junctions between them. They will reconnect between them. So once they connect between them, those neural bridges form memories. And those memories are long-term memories. And once the long-term memories are formed in our brain, then we can easily recall that thing. We'll never forget that thing again and again. So even if, let's say you, you just read one thing once only and start recalling it twice or thrice. And during the recall, you'll find that you are lacking in certain places. Wherever you're lacking, if you check your book and then memorize that thing, again, it will build that permanent bridge in your neural junction in your brain and that thing will be written in your brain permanently and you will never forget that thing for very long run you will remember that thing now in an exam like CSI and NET where the syllabus is pretty huge you need to memorize many things so during that time recalling is a huge implication because you are not going to read this thing again and again and again because this is worthless Let's say you devote six hours to read one particular thing again and again and you never recall it. The productivity will be low, believe it. Now if you read it once, 30 minutes, then recall it for two hours, that productivity will be very, very high in your brain. So try to do, do this thing. It will definitely improve the process of your chances of clearing CSI net. And now the third thing is that time management during exam hall. That is the huge thing because the CSI net exam is something which is multifactorial. It never assures you that whenever you read or learn too many things, it never assures you that you are going to get net. The only thing you can say that I have prepared um, in a good way and I probably get this going this time. But you may not uh, guarantee any success in it during this process or during this time. So what you can do here because the exam hall time management is a huge important thing because in the exam hall uh, there are questions you have 200 questions uh, I mean two marks of questions uh, question number is 25 uh, from the part C uh, you need to answer 35 questions from part B and 15 questions from part A. Now though the part B questions take 30 minutes to 40 minutes to answer all the questions but actual time consumption take place in the group C questions and group A questions because group C questions are bigger even if you read through the whole question paper of CSI and NET it will take one and a half hours so can you imagine that you need to read the question understand the question then answer that question in three hours that makes it difficult 
time management is obviously a very critical and crucial thing in any competitive exam including say sandnet so what you can do here is practice there is no other way you can have a better time management without practice so if you haven't practiced it let's say you prepared for net beautifully you've learned everything you, you've studied all these things but you never practice to answer questions then the chances are that you're going to crack net is less because what will have that happen that during that time you'll go you, you may answer the questions but it will take a too much of time it will consume too much of time and you may not be able to answer all the required questions in a given time because remember around 75 questions in group c you need to answer only 25 so you need to read through the questions to select which questions are better for you and the which questions you can answer properly correctly because obviously there are negative marks so you need to think that this is the question these are the questions which are going to give me confirmed answer and I'm, i know about the confirmation and i'm going to get it correctly so you need to think about that too so all these things matter so you need to practice a lot at your room at your home actually or uh, whenever you uh, you join any any of the mock test session or any of the uh, other um, commercial processes i mean other coaching centers you need to practice self practice is always the best habit even if you join any coaching center but it's always recommended that you practice yourself you take your mobile everyone nowadays has a smartphone and smartphone has a stopwatch turn the stopwatch one for three hours and start solving all the questions or you can get for one hour to solve uh, that small amount of question and then start uh, taking to the higher level start rising to the higher level but remember you need to choose questions which are obviously exactly competitive like the CS and net questions so for that best answer is that you should take uh, the previous year questions because they are standard questions that's the question that are going to come to the CS and net so select those questions start to answer those question based on the time and and see what is the result i mean how long you're going to answer the question how many times you're going to answer the questions and uh, you're going to know that that's going to build up and have it inside you that you need to answer questions very fast very very quick and that will definitely help you in the csi net exam hall so these are the three things that you you need to think and obviously a uh, strategy that you sometimes get mistaken that uh, you so most of the time the major thing people are unable to do in the net exam the, the reason they fail is that you simply read and read and prepare and you think you're going to get net but actually that's not the true thing you need to recall things you need to practice by looking at the clock in your room setting yourself completely apart and Clear, clearing up your mind and also you need to manage your fear so once you do all these things there is a process of guaranteed success in CSI and net I, I am telling you again this is guaranteed if you follow all these things if you prepare yourselves by this way you are going to get CSI and net pretty easily and you'll think this is very easy right so that's it guys I hope that's helpful if you like the video please subscribe because to get more video updates like this you need to subscribe and also share this video with your friends. Thank you.